thank you for the cross. We thank you for Jesus, who is the mediator, a guarantor of a better covenant, and a mediator and a high priest sitting at your right hand, mediating on behalf of us. We pray that uh, the mediation will take its full effect, that we will truly be blessed by his priestly ministry, that we will be filled with the Holy Spirit, and that you will cause us to walk in your statutes, and that you will pour out your righteousness in our hearts by faith, that the grace of God will touch us, heal us, and give us hope in this dying world. We pray your blessing in Jesus' name on this teaching. Amen. Okay, so um, the lesson is entitled, uh, In These Last Days, uh, the book of Hebrews, Jesus Speaks to Us. And uh, we've looked at his priestly, high priestly ministry a couple of weeks ago, the Melchizedek uh, priestly ministry, a righteous king in peace and, combination and, and combined with his holy priesthood. And uh, we found that we too play a, a role as a priest in this world and that we offer up spiritual sacrifices to God and that these spiritual sacrifices are holy unto God. And uh, it's because of the new covenant that we are able to offer up spiritual sacrifices. And it's that new covenant that God is, is wanting us to know about today um, so we, we have the Old Covenant and we have the New Covenant. The covenant means agreement. And on the basis of that agreement was the law. And the law is that unless we keep the law 100%, unless, we, unless the law of God is, 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 uh, is the standard of the universe, you know, because there will be no sin in the world to come. There will be a perfect reign of righteousness and holiness and love in that new heaven, the new earth, and the promised land. So Jesus, uh, so, so Jesus and God, the Father, made a covenant with his children in Israel at the time of Moses, okay? And that is known as the Old Covenant. And in that agreement was the basis of, of, uh, of faith, but they, they, they did not act in faith. They said, but they, they really meant well, okay? They said, all that the Lord has said, we will do. And what is the problem? Is that a wrong statement? Is that a wrong thing? No, it's not. It's only, it only falls short if it's not mixed with faith. Obviously, God saves us and saves everyone the same throughout all, all ages, right? So in that time, they were looking forward to the cross. We are looking back to the cross. So Jesus, the mediator of a better promise, so what was wrong with the old covenant, that uh, the old covenant agreement? Um, what what was um, what did it fall short in? Um, so let's let's uh, let's look at that scripture of, of the first one here. It says it's uh, Hebrews uh, uh, in your handout. It says Hebrews seven eleven and nineteen in eight uh, seven through nine. I'm going to read this to you, and uh, since we don't have any readers here today, I'll read it, and, and, and we'll get through it, okay? If perfection was through the Levitical priesthood, if what? Perfection was through the Levitical priesthood, for on the basis of it, the people received the law. What? further need was there for another priest to arise according to the order of Melchizedek, not designed according to the order of Aaron. For the priest is changed, it is of a necessity that there takes a place, a change of the law also. What law are we talking about? It's the law of the priesthood. There was a law in Israel that only the people that could become a priest or a high priest had to come through the descendants of Aaron, the, Le the Levites. 
So that law was in effect. But Jesus did not come through the Levitical priests, the, 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 the tribe of Levi. So in that sense, he did not qualify to be a priest. But God has a higher order of priesthood that we're going to see after the order of Melchizedek. Okay, so not designed according to the order of Aaron. When the priesthood is changed, the necessity there takes place a change of the law also. For the one about whom these things are said belongs to another tribe from which, there, which no one has officiated at the altar. And what is this tribe? For it is evident that our Lord is descended from the tribe of Judah, right? From Judah. A tribe of reference to, to which Moses said nothing concerning priests. Okay? There is a clearer still if another priest arises according to the likeness of Melchizedek, who, who has become the priest not on the basis of the law of the physical requirement, but according to the power of what? An instructable, instructable life. So that's the basis of which Jesus becomes our high priest. It's according to the law of of an instructable life, the Bible says. For it is attested of him, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek. So God the Father states with an oath, you are going to be a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. And uh, who has become a priest not on the basis of law or physical requirement, but according to the instruct indestructible life. For it is attested of him that you are a priest according to the order of Melchizedek. For on one hand, there is no nullification of the former commandment because of its weakness and uselessness. For the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is an introduction of a what? Better hope through which we come nearer to God. Okay? For the first covenant had been free of fault. No circumstances would have sought for a second. So what was what was the what what did Apostle Paul say here about uh, about uh, about the um, the priesthood of um, of Levites the administration of the priesthood of Levites it could make nothing perfect so the implication is I'm sorry oh yeah okay I'll go ahead and distribute them okay so. Um, so it's, 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 so we, we, uh, we have here the old and the new, okay? So what was wrong with the new? What was wrong with the new according to our text? It could make what? Nothing. Nothing. No, how much is nothing? Zero. Nothing what? Perfect. Okay? We're talking about sinners. It could not make, it said nothing perfect. The Levite, the priesthood of the Levites. Okay? Um, but Jesus comes not based on inheritance, but in, in, in what it says, in D. Destructible life. Life. Okay? That's the basis of our new covenant. And that the implication is, since this could not make anybody perfect in obedience to the law of God, this one could. And it does say that. Okay? Perfect obedience. Not that we but Christ has performed faultless, sinless, perfect obedience. He came to this, in the volume of the scroll it says, he did God's will constantly and never sinned in this life. So he has a what? An indestructible life. That's the basis of the new covenant that God has instituted that we're going to see what God offers and has done for Jesus 
is going to do it through us, through the new covenant. And he is the mediator, the guarantor of this new covenant. Okay, let's, because he's after the order of Melchizedek. Okay, all right, so let's go on. Um, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will bring a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with the fathers on the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, for they could not continue in my covenant. I did not care about them, says the Lord. Okay, so that's, they didn't continue. What does it mean they didn't continue in the covenant? Does anybody have an idea? They broke the covenant, okay? They, how, did, how did they break the covenant? They went after other gods, idolatry. They uh, committed all forms of sin that broke the law of God in their lives. And they deserted the law. They deserted God. They, they just... So they did not know God. They, they uh, apostatized. They rebelled. They hardened their hearts. And, and uh, they, they sinned against God. And they, and they rebelled against God. And they ended up, what? In captivity, in slavery. That they came out of. So this, uh, this is the result that God says during the time of Jeremiah... Remember the time of Jeremiah? What was happening? They were being sieged by Nebuchadnezzar, and they were going to be taken off into exile, into captivity, into slavery. Uh, and so God says, he makes this promise that to his children that were in rebellion, in the state of rebellion. So let's look at that promise, and that's our next text on the uh, handout today. And it says, what promise had God, had, had, had the Lord made through the prophet Jeremiah? What promise did he make? Let's read it. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will, bring, I will make a new covenant after the house of Israel and the house of Judah. So what is this? The new covenant. The new covenant he's making. Okay? He's making the new covenant. That which I made with your fathers on the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant which they broke, although I was a husband to them. So what is a husband to them? It implies that they, he had a, a relationship with them. Uh, a a uh, connection, doesn't it? I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. He was a provider. That's what a husband is. He's a provider, huh? He provides life. He provides righteousness. He provides holiness. He was a husband to them. Okay? Declares the Lord, for this is the covenant I will make with the house. Um, let's see. Okay. Declares the Lord, for this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them and write it on their heart. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. They will not teach again each other, one his neighbors, and each one his brothers, saying, Know the Lord, for they will all what? Know me. Know me. For the least of them to the greatest of them, declares the Lord, for I will forgive their what? Wrongdoing. And their sin I will remember no more. So what's the basis of the covenant? He says that he will write what? The law. What law are we talking about here? On their hearts. What's the heart? The heart is the mind, isn't it? It's the deep center of loyalty is our minds. This is where we make our decisions. It's not talking about the organ heart. It's talking about the mind in which we have our thoughts that reflect who we are, whether we are reflecting God's character or not in love. So, so he says he's going to write the laws on our heart and mind. Okay? What else does it say about this covenant? 
that they will what? Know me. So they will know me. So that means an intimate relationship, doesn't it? That God is going to have an intimate relationship with you. He is going, they will know me, the least to the greatest of them. And then what does it say? That, um, what's, the, what's the other condition of the covenant? That he's going to guarantee forgiveness of sin. Right? That's what it says. That's the new covenant uh, relationship, that they will know me, he will write the laws in their heart, and forgiveness of sins. And there's another thing it says. I will what? Writes, okay, some versions say blot out their sins. So Christ is going to blot out our sins forever. Amen? There were no remembrance of sin. No remembrance of sin. So this is, this is a covenant that God had in, actually from the beginning, didn't he? But um, this is his, his desire for his children, is be based on his instructable life, his perfect obedience, is to bring righteousness, holiness, into our hearts so to cause us to walk in obedience to his commandments. That's how he's going to do it. And provide us a knowledge of him, and in relationship with him, he is going to change our characters and forgive us. David said, create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Jesus wants to create in you a clean heart. In fact, let's read about it. Nine, Hebrews 9.14. Uh, Hebrews 9.14, can somebody read that for us? Hebrews 9.14, do we have any mics? I want, I want to hear the good news. I want to hear the gospel of the new covenant. And uh, Hebrews 9.14 says what? Hebrews 9.14. The book of Hebrews is in the New Testament in the back. And, uh, and it's right... Uh, okay, go ahead and read it, Nellie. 914. Uh, okay, so how much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from, the, from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God? So part of the new covenant is that Christ will cleanse the consciousness from sin. Cleanse the consciousness from sin. Okay? That's, that's, uh, that's the new covenant, the blood of Christ, cleansing the consciousness from sin. Okay, um, let's go on. Um, well, how does the ceremonial system foreshadow the, the, the good things to come? The old covenant was based on animal sacrifices, and they had all kinds of sacrifices, sin sacrifices, peace offerings, all kinds of animal sacrifice, bulls and goats. But it's impossible that these bulls and goats can cleanse us from sin, could they? So how, how old was the old, how was the old ceremonial system a shadow of good things to come? For the law, since it was only a shadow of the good things to come, it was not in the form of those things itself, can never, by the same sacrifices which they continually offer every year, make make those who approach perfect. So the, the, the uh, law of the Old Testament animal system could make no one perfect. And this is the text that, that supports that. Uh, okay, going on to the new covenant, better mediator. So now that we know what the covenant offers us, let's look at the better, that Christ is the better mediator of the covenant. Who is the mediator of the Old Covenant? Does anybody know? Um, well, um, it was the priest, Levitical priesthood, you know. But um, but now we're going to look at the better mediator, okay? The superior mediator. So let's look at Hebrews one eight. 
1 through 6. Now the main point in what we have been said is this. We have such a high priest who has taken uh, who has been taken his seat at the right hand of of uh, the throne of the majesty on, of heavens. A minister in the sanctuary in the true tabernacle which is the Lord set up not man. For every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. So it's necessary that this high priest also have something to offer. Now, if he, is, he was on earth, he would not be a priest at all since there, are, since there are those who offer gifts according to law, who serve as a copy and shadow of the heavenly things. Just as Moses was warned by God that he was, he was able to erect the, the tabernacle for for C, he says that you make all things by the pattern which was shown to you on the mountain. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry to the extent that he is a meteor of a better covenant, which is, has enacted on better promises. So what do we find? Why, why is uh, Christ a uh, better mediator? Let's... let's uh, Let's look at that. Why is Christ a better mediator? Okay. So if we were going to a mediator, a mediatorial, a mediator, what, is the, what does mediation mean? Mediate, me, mediate, or something like that. Mediator. Okay? So he is Christ's mediation. That's what we just read about, this text. So what, what, uh, what does it say about his me mediatorial work, his mediation? Why is his superior, why is his, his um, why is he a better, a superior mediator than the old mediation? Uh, mediatorial. Well, one, what does it say here in the text? Does anybody have the answer? Give me some answers from the text. What is that? Because he is the glory of God. Okay. The, the others only reflected the glory of God. Okay, what does the text say about why he is a superior mediator of a better promise? Because he's a mediator of a better promises, right? Yeah. Better promises. What else? More say it again. More yeah, there you go. E more, more excellent ministry. Now, what does that mean? And a better covenant, yes. Ministry. And a what? Better covenant. better covenant. Okay. What else? I'm sorry? Okay, he sits at the right hand of God. Sits at the right hand of God. And what does that mean? As we discovered earlier in our lessons, at the right hand of God means authority, right? He reigns with righteousness and authority. So he sits at the right hand of God. He purged our sins. He sits at the right hand of God. Okay, so that's uh, why, why Jesus is a mediator, but he's a guarantor, it says too. What does that word guarantor mean? Guar a guarantor. Guarantor. I don't know, I really. Guarantor. Okay. Guarantor. So he's a guarantor.
Guarantor of a better covenant. Guarantor means basically he keeps his promises. So here we have nobody could keep the law of God without God. Nobody. The flesh could not keep the law of God. The old covenant, the promises were like ropes of sand. Nobody can keep the law. The law of God cannot give us righteousness, cannot pardon us, cannot forgive, cannot cleanse. God had to do that work. That's the mediatorial work that he does for us. So we have here a, a better mediation than the old covenant because it was made on better promises. What are the better promises? Write them in your heart. You will know me. You will have a relationship and you will be forgiven and I'll, I'll, I'll remember your sins no more. So these are better promises that salvation was based on faith and that God could save us through grace. These were the better promises that the blood of Christ, that the grace of God and through faith we can be saved because we could not possibly conjure up any what? Righteousness and love in our hearts. We are devoid of love, and, uh, and naturally it doesn't come to us. We don't have a holy, righteous love in our heart that God has in his heavenly kingdom. So God had to write these in our hearts. That's the new covenant, and that's why he is a mediator. He is going to accomplish that in our lives. That's what he offers us. Okay, so let's go on to the, um, the reason. Me, uh, the term mediator can have many meanings. Okay, um, let's look at uh, um, so the, the term mediator. And you mentioned that word that the glory of the Lord. Moses reflected the glory of the Lord when he came into the presence of Jesus and God, right? When, when Moses went up on the mountain and he spent time with God, he came down, and he reflected God's glory. So in the same way, when we are in a holy relationship with God, what's going to happen to us? We will reflect the glory of the Lord. But God himself is the glory. But if we came into the presence of God's sinless glory and his holy righteousness, it would be what? A consuming fire to us. But God in his mercy has veiled us by coming to this earth in the form of a man. And so that we, we would not see in the, in, the, in the direct presence of the glory of God. Because if we were to stand in the glory of God, it would, it would destroy us. Because we don't have that indestructible life. We are forming that indestructible life. And that indestructible life is Christ, isn't it? And when he puts his indestructible mind in us and his holy, undefiled mind, then we, we, we can stand in the glory of the Lord and not be consumed. And that's why the new covenant promises is here, is to get us ready to stand in the glory of the Lord. And um, so this, this standing in the glory of the Lord, like Moses did, and becoming a friend of God, is the process in which this new covenant power that God is going to do for us is going to change our lives and make us his children uh, and, and, and get us ready to stand in the glory of the Lord. And isn't that good news, what, what Jesus is trying to accomplish? Amen? All right, so let's uh, um, look at uh, the new covenant had better promises as we have seen. The promises of God's are always good. How can we make better promises? But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry to the extent that he has a mediator of a better covenant, which has been enacted on better promises. So this, we already have gone through that. So compare Exodus 24 to um, Hebrews 10. How are the better promises in the new covenant different from the promises in the old? So what were the promises in the, new, in the old? The promises in the old were all that the Lord has said we will, we will do. 
So that's, that's the promise of the people, and obviously they didn't do that, right? And the promises in the new covenant is what? God makes that promise. And what does he promise? To change our hearts, to write them on us, on our hearts, to, and to make us to know him, to have a relationship, and to forgive us of our sins, and to blot them out, and to create in us a clean conscience, and, and, and to, to, to deliver us from sin, to take away sin from our lives, and to put his holy, righteous life into us through the mind of Christ, right? So that's God's covenant promise. Uh, so what's, what's, what's the problem with the other? One was not mixed with faith, wasn't it? And the, and the new covenant is based on faith. So in order for us to receive those promises, what do we have to do? What's our part in all this? Faith, okay? So what is faith? Faith is our response, isn't it? To what we hear. Does faith imply a res surrender, Jay? Um, yeah. Well, what are we surrendering to? Okay. And so how do I surrender? So I'm surrendering my will to his yes. will, right? Yes. And when I surrender, I'm giving him the opportunity to do what? To take possession yeah. of my mind. To fill me with what? His spirit. So let's take a look at that promise. Ezekiel. Ezekiel 36. I want somebody to read. Uh, could you read that for us, Roger? Ezekiel 36, 26, and 27. Ezekiel 26, uh, Ezekiel, it's right there on the handout. Um, just read that uh, portion there. Uh, the, the scriptures are right there. Uh, the two scriptures, uh, Jeremiah 31, 33, the New Covenant, and Ezekiel 36, 26, and 27. It's on the, uh, uh, the last page of the handout, Transformed Hearts. Go ahead and read that. Transformed Heart. Transformed Transformed heart. That's what the covenant is is is, uh, is doing. Is transforming our hearts. For for this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them and write it on their heart, and I will be their God, and he and they shall be my people. Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and bring it about that you walk in my statutes and are careful and follow my ordinances. Okay, so what is the heart of stone he's going to remove? He's going to give us a heart of flesh. The heart of flesh he's going to give us. Okay? And then what he's going to do after that? It says here that he's going to do what? Put his spirit in us. Put his spirit in us. So, so what is the heart of stone? Our will? Anybody else? Our 
distinguishes of human of nature. What's a desensitized? Okay, so some some people have a soft heart, and some people have a hardened heart. Okay, they're callous, desensitized. I remember seeing a lot of horrible things when I worked the emergency room. People dying, people bleeding, people in pain. And I had to desensitize myself in order to not be wrecked by all that. It's like trauma, you know, emotional trauma. But I had to desensitize. I had to, my heart was not it was sort of hardened against the, uh, the pain and suffering in order for me to think clearly through the issues and help them. So a hardened heart is a desensitized heart that is not sensitive to the law of God, to the ways of God. It's a heart of stone, right? A heart of rebellion, a heart of defiance, a heart that is not a, a proudful heart, a heart that's not converted and transformed. It's a heart that's not renewed, it's not soft, it's hardened. So God says he's gonna remove that from us. Yeah, you, they, you can't uh, talk to them. They're, they're not sensitive to what you're saying. They're hardened hardened heart. And in fact, Hebrews warns us against the hard heart, right? Not to, not to get into that state. So how do we get into the state of a stony heart, a hard heart? When we don't what? Surrender. Surrender when we don't, uh, when we're not connected. But God wants to remove that from us and put the heart of flesh. And, and what's the heart of flesh? It's a sensitive heart, right? It's a soft heart. A receptive heart. Wow. God is going to do that to us. And we need that daily, don't we? In order not to have that stony heart. Because as we go about living this life, if we are not in connection and in, in the new covenant relationship, we form the stony heart. And God is we push God away and he doesn't remove it from us daily and give us his heart of flesh. So the heart of flesh is the heart of Jesus, isn't it? The heart, what's the heart of Jesus like? It's kind, it's loving, it's forgiving, it's humble, it's um, filled with love and patience and long-suffering. That's the heart of flesh that he wants to write, according to the guarantor of the new covenant promise today in your hearts. That's the good news of our mediator. And then he's going to do what? Put his spirit in us. And then it says what? After he puts her, his spirit in us, he takes the heart, of, the heart of stone out, puts the heart of flesh, he puts the spirit in us and causes us to do what? Cause and effect causes us to what? Keep his statues, right? Keep his law. So it is God working through you, keeping this law. It is God that's giving you the heart of flesh. It is God that gives you the spirit that causes you to keep his law and walk in his statues. Isn't that beautiful that the new covenant promise Jesus is the mediator, the high priest who stands at the right hand of God to give us his spirit and take that stony heart out. That's his mediation work. And give us a heart of flesh and cause us to walk in his statues. That's our hope. Our hope is not in ourselves. Our hope is not in, I can uh, conjure up some obedience to God. It's a decision, yes but a decision to uh, align our will with the will of God. And that's 
how we as high priests, I'm not a high priest, but priest, holy priest, it says in Peter, offer up spiritual sacrifices. Those are the spiritual sacrifices. It's the sacrifices of the work and the gifts from Jesus. It's his gifts. It's working through you. It's his righteousness working through you. And that's the beautiful thing about how God wants to make you priests and kings in this world, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Amen? So can you think of some people's lives that were transformed by in the New Testament and the Old Testament? Well, David fell into sin, didn't he? He was a murderer and an adulterer. And he, he what, did, what did David do that demonstrated that he understood the new covenant? He did what? Uh, let's read it. Um, somebody read Psalms 51, 10 through 12. Psalms 51, 10 through 12. Who wants to read that? Jay, can you read that? 51, 10 through 12. And it's a red light, so we'll quit here after we hear this text. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Jay. Create, create, me, create in me a pure heart, O God, and a new a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Amen. Yes. Father in heaven, we pray for that clean heart that you so want to give us. Take our heart of stone away from us, Father. Put the heart of flesh. Create in us a clean heart. And a right spirit, we pray. That according to your spirit, you can cause your children here today walk 